Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker. Play the Opinion Potomac Watch podcast. From the Opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. Let's do one more Supreme Court decision today. This one is the City of Grants Pass versus Johnson, which held that city bans on homeless encampments are not a violation of the Eighth Amendment's prohibition on cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, Alicia, can you start with how we even got those two things connected, since it's hard to see how the Eighth Amendment would apply in the first place? I think the majority is scratching their head at this Ninth Circuit ruling that goes back to 2018. Actually, that was involved a different city, Boise, Idaho. And Ninth Circuit, in that case, held that the Eighth Amendment's ban on cruel and unusual punishment of applies to cities that try to enforce anti-camping laws that prevent homeless people or anyone for that matter from sleeping or camping out in public spaces. And the Ninth Circuit ruled that such fines or citations were essentially criminalizing the involuntary status of being homeless. And now this Ninth Circuit goes back to its Robinson, another California case actually back from 1962, in which the Supreme Court court blocked a California law that criminalized drug addiction. There, the court held that cannot criminalize the quote-unquote status of being an addict, though you can, of course, prosecute somebody who is using drugs. And this was a bit of a legal distinction without an actual practical difference in some in many cases. But that case, actually, the Supreme Court has never actually relied or extended to that case. And in the Ninth Circuit, that's essentially what it tried to do here. And it basically ruled that there is a right to be homeless. And in states, it's in cities that try to remove homeless encampments or criminalizing the status of being homeless, which is not by their own volition. And the Ninth Circuit actually extended that case involving City of Grants Pass in Oregon and also ruled that so long as a city doesn't have enough beds and shelters for every single homeless person on the street, they cannot enforce these laws. And that's kind of a, it was a judge-made doctrine, as we like to call them. And as a result, the Ninth Circuit there were some pretty fierce dissents in this case, and this went up to the Supreme Court, and here you've got a 6-3 majority. So this Ninth Circuit ruling basically has no basis in the Constitution that the Eighth Circuit was intended only to apply to the kinds of punishment, not the actual kinds of actions or conduct. So the Eighth Amendment may prohibit torture or all kinds of, or even could apply to capital punishment. But it has, says nothing about the kinds of actions or crimes that states can pass laws against. And so the majority says that the Robinson applies very in a narrow circumstances and declines to extend it as far as the Ninth Circuit tried to, as well as the liberals seem to want to. Kim, part of what was so remarkable about this Grants Pass case is there were a lot of pretty blue cities who were coming in and asking the Supreme Court to overturn this precedent by the Ninth Circuit, and that includes the city of San Francisco. Mayor there said that this misapplication of the court's Eighth Amendment precedents has, quote, severely constrained San Francisco's ability to address the homelessness crisis, and went on to say that there are people who have been in these encampments on the streets of San Francisco, and they cite that precedent from the Ninth Circuit when Uh, authorities come and ask them to move along. They say, you can't do that. We have an Eighth Amendment right to be here. And that is a pretty remarkable coming together of blue cities and red cities and purple cities telling the Supreme Court that what the Ninth Circuit did here has made their efforts to clean up the streets unworkable. And there was some pretty striking jubilation after this ruling by those same group of of bedfellows that you wouldn't necessarily expect. But they had been so hemmed in by this that we're finding it impossible to deal with their growing homeless problems. And there's a lot of public policy implications to that as well. I think it's important to remember the other side of the coin here. There were obviously a lot of homeless activists who were arguing that the Supreme Court must rule that there is an Eighth Amendment because it would be so terrible for the homeless. But if you don't have this kind of public order, you also tie the hands of officials to try to get some in homeless populations help. 
because instead of actively searching for it or being able to offer that assistance, as you note, they were simply able to say, we have a right to do whatever we want. And so this problem was growing. I mean, the way I look at this ruling, and I think it's a good distinction here, is that they made a point of differentiating that Robinson law that actually criminalized the status of something. It said, you know, it is illegal for you to be a drug addict. And they made the distinction with laws that are aimed at everybody, but which simply catch up some groups of people. So they pointed out that what this particular law in Grants Pass does is criminalize camping on a public property. And that applies to everybody. It applies to the random backpacker. It applies to a protester who decides doesn't get a permit and just wants to stay out in a public space. A random camper who just decides it's easier to stay there than to go get a campground site. And as it happens, it also applies to those who are homeless. And it pointed out that back in 1968, the court similarly refused to agree to extend the Eighth Amendment over a Texas law that made it a crime to be intoxicated while in public. And some people tried to argue that that was criminalizing the status of being an alcoholic. But as the court noted then, that law applies to everybody. It applies to someone who just randomly occasionally has a drink and to those who drink more and to those who might be alcoholics. So I think it's actually a very sound legal principle that was put forward here. And there are going to be a lot of public policy implications, but not all of those are necessarily going to be terrible in my mind for the growing problem of homelessness and how we come up with solutions that actually make a dent and help to fix it. Thank you, Kim and Alicia. Thank you all for listening. You can email us at pwpodcast at wsj.com. If you like the show, please hit that subscribe button, and we'll be back tomorrow with another edition of Potomac Watch. Mm-hmm.